All right, guys. So it is uh, it is Monday. It is a fresh day, new start, and uh, we got this engine from the junkyard the other day, which was the one UZ with the big rods in it. So Sean went ahead. Well, not only for that, we needed the oil pan, which is a front sump. The three UZ over there is a, a mid sump, and we need the front sump for the 240. So here we are. We got the front sump off of it. Sean got the front sump off of it. And now the cool thing about this thing is, is this thing has the big dog rods. Since this motor, this engine was from 1990, this thing has the big dogs, whereas the one over there is from 2002 and it has the little tiny skinny boys. So people have been known to make over 700 horsepower on these rods. Bought this thing as kind of a core motor. Wasn't cranking over, had a bunch of water in the cylinders. The intake manifold was off of it. We got it to uh, rotate over enough to at least get the flywheel and everything off or the flex plate. Now Sean has the, the bottom of it off. We're gonna go ahead, or he's gonna go ahead and actually pull these main caps off by the whole oil pump assembly off of the front and then just yank the pistons and rods just right out of the bottom of it. So that way we don't have to mess with pulling the heads or any of that other stuff. And then we'll have the rods. And then, uh, so that way we can kind of decide if we're gonna end up putting the rods in this engine before this event. Uh, got a lot of stuff to do. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but I think you could get the rods in there today. Like yeah. if, this, if this was the only thing you did today was focus on getting rods in there and the only thing I did today was focus on getting the wiring, then by the end of the day, this thing should technically have rod, three UZ, one UZ rods and the three UZ with the wiring. I don't and know we should be able to like when you, when start it. This morning or something. Well, Kinsey, so Kinsey, what she does is she she bonks her head all the time. And I think that's what happened to me when I was a kid. Yeah. So maybe that's what's happening here. And me thinking that we're going to get this thing running tonight. But I'm know. going to bed at some point today. Eventually. But before we do that, we got to get running. So that is a little bit of an update. Sean's going to go ahead and yank all this stuff out. I do have some diagrams. It is kind of complicated. I haven't found these specific diagrams yet for this one. But I think that should be pretty easy. I think those are just powers. And I think those are just grounds. And that's just a starter wire. And then we just need to pin this into an ECU master and then see if it'll run. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we should try starting this before we do all that or just since we have to do that, I'll just worry about wiring. You do that, I'll do this. So you really want to put rods in it? I kind of want to put the rods in it, but we'll we'll see. But we have four days. We we pretty much have four days. So the goal here is time to see crunch. how many cars we can get running before the Evo wagon. That's what we're trying to do. How many other cars we can get done, finished, running, and driving before the Evo wagon? In case yeah. you guys are wondering what we're doing here, that's our. How many? Have we, how many have we got done? Well, the Supra. This will be two. That's kind of like we already bought that thing running. Oh, got four wheeler. That thing runs. Yeah, great. you got the four wheeler. You what got else? you got that go kart. Go kart. Yeah, we're we're on. A few we got some other stuff. We need to work on this other go kart, but we got a lot of things to do. We're gonna we're gonna get to it. That escalated quickly. Yeah. We thought initially we were gonna be able to just yank the crank out of it and then actually pull the pistons and rods out of the bottom, but the girdle is in fact in the way. So it just it hits it right there. So heads have to come off, which that's fine. John likes, you like doing stuff like this, right? Love it. Big fan? Big, big fan? Love it. That's why I show up here every, every day. Every single day. Yeah, religiously. So. <laughs> religiously, buddy, every day. Might be a little late, but. Even, on, even on the weekends. Even too. on the weekends, yep. Even on the weekends. Here. So. Heads are coming off and pistons and rods are coming out. And then I'm still struggling to find the wiring harness stuff that I need, but I think I'm just gonna go over there and start. I'll just be like, yeah, I think this one has power. We'll give it power. Only way to do it is to do it, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, go ahead. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead. All right guys, so we've ran across some unfortunate news. Sean was yanking this thing apart and got the pistons and rods, or we're starting to pull them, got the heads off of this thing. You can tell this was like a, a zero fox. Zero fox. Yeah. yeah, zero fox. Zero fox, all we need is a rod, don't care about nothing else. Yeah, so job. yanked everything out, basically threw it on the ground on the pile just because we're trying to rush and get this thing apart. Unfortunately, this thing had the intake manifold off it when it was sitting in the junkyard and I basically told him as a guy, I just want to buy that thing for the rods and the oil pan. So just basically a core motor price. So they charged me like 150 bucks, 75 bucks for the cool. core and then 75 yeah. bucks to pull it. So not too bad, but this rod right here, it's kind of hard to tell. 
but is actually bent just the slightest little bit. Um, yeah, you can see how it's kind of flared out right here and it just kind of tweaks off that way, whereas this one is completely straight. So that really sucks, but the reasoning is because it had all the water in the cylinders. You can see like all that mud and dirt. Yeah, the and, motor was and, locked up when we got it. So we, we put like a four foot pry bar on the flex plate mm -hmm. to get it to turn over. So I don't well, know if that's what happened or. So we had to do that in order to get it to turn over so we could take off the flywheel bolt or the torque to converter bolts to get like it on the engine stand. So we had all the spark plugs off it though. We didn't even try cranking yeah. it without the spark plugs in it. But as soon as we opened the spark plugs, they were full of oil or full of water. And so there's like big chunks of like rust and all kinds of stuff. So this thing was probably just kind of seized up in there. And you know, Sean's a big dude. We put that, that it was actually like a six foot pry bar. I think it's like a, like a four or five foot. It, yeah. it, it's pretty big dog. And uh, anyhow, that's what happens. Um, it's, it's honestly not the biggest deal in the world with the amount of time and stuff that we have to put this engine together. It's probably a good thing that we're just almost gonna like abandon putting rods in this thing, which means that we don't have to pull the heads off it. We don't have to pull the rods. We don't have to pull the pistons. We don't have to do any of that stuff. Saves us a hell of a I time. did buy a new timing belt kit and everything. So what we're gonna do is look at the timing belt. If the timing belt looks okay and the water pump looks okay, we're actually just gonna send it how it is. The only thing we're gonna change is just the oil pan, which honestly saves us a huge amount of time. That way we could just focus on wiring this thing and getting it actually in the car and uh, Get it running, running and, and driving. After, like after this event, we can maybe mock up like a, a turbo setup on it for when we do pull it and put some rods in it and either, you know, run it until it blows up or, you know, maybe after this event, run it naturally aspirated then. Yeah. Well, if, uh, if it gets a turbo on it, it's going to get ran, but we could run it at low boost, you know, like five, seven pounds or something. Yeah. Keep the, you know, keep Very the boost insane. low, keep the torque out of it and, uh, and have a cool, you know, setup again. Mostly, I just want to do something different and have fun with it. And maybe if that is us testing the limits of a stock 3UZ, because nobody's really done that. Like, yeah. everybody says that you can't make power on these, which I know you probably can't. Not a lot. You probably can't make that much power. But, you know, if we make 450 reliably, I mean, that, this, thing, this thing will literally rip. That's what it was on yeah. forever. Made 450 and it ripped. So if we could do that and keep this thing together, if not, if it blows up, We'll try to find another one and we'll, we'll slap some rods in it. Honestly, we have this whole block right here now. So if we needed to, we have the rotating assembly. We could do pistons, rods, whatever, well, pull, these the head, pull these heads apart, put those heads on there, and then eventually have a uh, really big dog 1UZ or 3UZ yeah. kind of transplant. So right now, I guess it's, we got to swap the pans on this thing. And I guess that's pretty much it. Swap the pans and then get it wired and then try to start it. The goal is to try to start it by the end of this video on the ground. So if we could get that done, all the adapter stuff should be here tomorrow and we should be looking good for, uh, for making grid life with this thing in like four days. Camp Sync 1, so we have Camp Sync 1 and Camp Sync 2. Yeah. We no. have both. So I'm going to trace this. What, what is this? Alright guys, it's been a little while since we've, uh, we've updated you on everything that's been going on. And honestly, there has been a lot of stress and a lot of just really trying to figure this thing out. The wiring diagrams on that I got were a lot different. So uh, it was even just hard to find these diagrams in general. But the, the way everything is, they kind of have these things E5, E6, E4. They're actually labeled like D, E, E, and C. And they're kind of like used in different ways. So like right here we have, I think this is the injectors right here. So we have E5, which is technically E5 number 15. And then you have like the E01, which is like a ground. That's like the ground junction for them. Or no, that's the po that's the power junction. Power and this is all power. Yep. And here's all your white, black, white, black ground, all your browns for ground. So it, it, it's a really interesting wiring harness, which is honestly really crazy. That after we basically pin in all this stuff, you could see we have uh, like the VV, VVL sensors, or that's the variable valve timing left bank, uh, ACIS, which is like this control valve. Uh, we have the plus and minus, like this M plus 
and that M positive the right there. The that's boost. for the electronic motor right here uh, to actually control the, you know, the electronic throttle body. Then we have, you know, cam sync two, cam sync one. We have injector number two. We have the alternator sense. We have all this stuff, but it's crazy that literally this these wires, the these wires right here, pretty much run this whole engine. Yeah, this is your power basically. This is your signal to your starter, and this is your power at all. You know, your injectors, your your coils. And then everything else obviously just gets signal from the ECU. And so the, it's a little bit more complicated if you use a stock ECU because you have to delete the mobilizer, do some other stuff. But overall, it, it is very simple uh, once you get everything down. And we have taken out a lot of sensors. Like there's this cam sensor in the front of the engine I don't think we need anymore. All the O2 sensors and stuff like that because we are not running factory O2 sensors. We are going to be using a wideband that is wired directly to the ECU master. So lots of... Uh, Lots of stuff that we need to uh, to kind of pin in as well. Also, the throttle position sensor or the the accelerator pedal position sensor. TPS is up here. That is wired separately. And then the throttle. This is the the pedal position sensor. So this is like your throttle cable, basically, just via voltage instead of the other way around. So this pedal actually bolts in. So I need to make this like a whole wiring harness just for this that goes to the ECU master that's separate of the engine just to tell it and like give it its own power and give it its own grounds and yeah. stuff. And then that will give a voltage to the ECU and then that will tell the throttle to do what it needs to do. So right now the dilemma that we're kind of uh, trying to figure out is whether we want to do the engine bay ECU box. It looks like a fuse box. It's kind of big, kind of bulky and um, don't really need it because we are going to be running the ECU master. Uh, Obviously, we don't want to just stick that thing in the EC, in the engine bay. They are kind of waterproof, but still, I'd rather not yeah. deal with that. Um, I don't know. So right now, the only thing really that I think we would have to extend, probably a couple wires, but is these cam, the actual crankshaft, crank position sensor down there on the bottom. It has this shielded wire right here. So, and I actually just went ahead and used this label maker to uh, kind of print the labels, kind of fold them around, stick them on e each other. Uh, so that way we were comfortable with kind of giving this whole ECU a haircut right there. And uh, yeah, definitely complicated uh, initially, but now it's simple. Like now if we needed to do this again, it'd be super simple. Yeah, we know but, everything to eliminate. And you know, first time pretty much wiring a, a whole, you know, engine, you know, by myself and kind of going along with it with Sean and we're both learning stuff along the way. Cool thing, so right now this engine is on a rolly cart. We're gonna roll it over in front of, kind of over here. Kind of see if we can get the the harness to lay out and actually get the ECU in the, the cab of the car, which ultimately I think that's the best place for it. You know, it'll look better, it'll make the engine look better. Especially when we go to like turbo this thing, there's gonna be a lot of hot stuff running around in the engine bay. So I think uh, we're just overall, it's just gonna be better. Uh, it'll take me a little bit longer to wire it, but uh, I got approval from uh, from Jamie to stay down here and uh, and basically wire this thing tonight. And ultimately, I do want to have it started, which I've already said that. But move this thing over. See uh, see if we get it figured out. Made some decent progress on this thing. So went ahead and got a lot of the wires extended and then actually ran some new crank sensor wire right here for the front. Same thing with this cam sensor right here. You can see this white wire. That's actually the, has the shielded kind of braided line or whatever in there. So I went ahead and soldered all that stuff on there. So we have cam sensor, crank sensor, Extended some wires. There was a broken uh, pin to the coolant temp sensor. Had to redo that. Kind of got everything kind of, you know, where it essentially needs to be other than all this stuff. So this was all the ones that I had to extend. I think total it was about 
I don't know, like 16 or 20 wires or something. I think it's about 16 wires that I had to extend. So got to pull these over here and actually get these things right in the, um, you know, put transfer the labels to the end, get them over here, kind of get them laid out next to the EMU and we'll pin them and this thing should start. Overall, it's pretty late. I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to come back in the morning so we get this thing to fire up on the ground. This is the side to see right here, UPS. So on that UPS truck, we were supposed to have the adapter plate as well as, what is the other stuff that we have? Oh, the wideband thing, because I have to wire it in a wide, oh, we have to put the wideband wiring in here too. We're doing great. Check out this wiring harness though. I'm, I'm really proud of uh, how this thing looks. And Sean's been spending basically all morning on just cleaning up, tidying this stuff. So crank position sensor over here, this is intake air temp right here decided to pull off some of the factory loom and then you can see it's all zip tied wired up real nice right here you can see how it kind of wise back here this is a starter signal we have these little blocks hidden back here these are kind of like a, what are those like a noise filter I think so. and then yeah, this just on. basically just kind of scooted all the way back over here to the emu this is our shortest wire technically now so that's pretty much where we're going to start start cutting splicing pinning this thing should be running she runs yeah in a few hours We just plugged the ECU in for the very first time. We have the engine grounded. We have all the wires and stuff. We have like a kind of a, a little temporary fused solution to give this thing power, basically switched ignition. And then that should power everything up. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and we disconnected all the coils, injectors, all that stuff. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna power up the ECU and throw the base map on there. So that way all the inputs, outputs, and pins and stuff are in the right spot. Uh, so it's not trying to give anything power or, you know, any of that type of stuff. So if it goes beep, that means... So that means so far so good. That's the start, that's the... It means it, it beeped. That number one injector. Do it again. Yeah. 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 Hit the, hit the drive by wire and see what it does. Now the drive-by wire is working. 
I mean, everything should be kind of okay. The crank cam sensor, all that stuff. Um, let's crank it and see if it has it. Here, hold on. Let me see what this check engine light is. Oh, not a check engine light, buddy. Already. Crank it. Let's see. Let's see if it has RPM. Buddy, it's synced too. This is gonna rip. If it if it has if it has fuel, fuel it's gonna start right now. Like, they just need a little little spritz. What are we what are we gonna give it? Carbon choke probably. Yeah, you need to be our motor mounts, Blake. Give her a little, uh, you got that? Ready? Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. Look at my arm hair. I about burned my leg hair off too right here. Did it go out the bottom too? A little bit. So yeah, like all my arm hairs right now are got a little singed. little so singe. Did right? you see that fireball? <laughs> a fireball about this this big. I didn't see the fireball. I was I Yeah, was if we can hook up the fuel, this thing's gonna freaking run. Hey guys, do you want to see these pictures? Yeah. yeah. I wanna see some pictures. She freaking runs. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. This, like just wiring this thing. Yeah, and now she's freaking working. Where's your, uh, I just can't believe the throttle. Yeah, that's, that's the right. thing that I'm most stoked about right now. That was the thing that I was like worried about the most. Where's, yeah. where's your fuel at? You crazy? You put a clamp on that. I don't know, baby. We're doing safety third right now. All right. Fuel cut above pressure. All right, so we have the fuel line hooked up into my S14. Basically have this coming from the tank. This thing already has a battery in it and everything ready to go and has a pump in the tank. And so what we're gonna do is use that to pressurize this. This is a kind of a deadhead system, so it doesn't have a return. So it's kind of a returnless style system. So I have this, I had a Corvette fuel pressure regulator laying around. So this is a filter slash regulator. And so it comes in right here. It regulates it to about 58 pounds. It uses, it's a filter too. And then it shoots out 58 PSI in the kind of this whole like deadhead system. And then it returns from there to the tank, which we're just dumping it straight into a little thing because we don't have any extra fuel line to dump it in, you know, into the actual tank. So we're, uh, we're gonna see. Hopefully we're not gonna blow ourselves up. Is this up. dangerous? I don't know. Might, might be a little. You want, you want to grab the fire extinguisher? Where's Don't it at? Don't say that. Outlet to engine. Bye. Is it, it, this is definitely the feed. Well, it, it blew off. Yeah, Blake, get on the fire extinguisher, dude. How fast is this gonna turn? Should have got a big. So what I was thinking is it doesn't have a, a line going to the map sensor. So it might not, it, it's not reading yeah, like how much air it's flowing. Yeah. So it's technically like probably giving it a lot of fuel to yeah, the Yeah, it's sitting out black. And it has 58 pounds of fuel pressure, so even that is probably uh, Nice little assortment of, uh, of boys. What 
I could think maybe is uh, timing light. I'll check the timing and, and make sure that it's shooting where it needs to shoot. Anything not having the... Like it's, it's hitting it zero, or it's hitting it at TDC. Yeah. Which maybe it doesn't need to hit the TDC. That's weird. Train. Disable that. Let's try it. I just did. Let's try it. Yeah. Is it? Hold on. Go ahead. All right guys, so as you've seen, it was basically cranking and starting and dying. So as it was cranking, it was starting and dying, starting and dying, starting and dying. And so just haven't quite figured that out yet. But the way that this wiring harness turned out, I'm, uh, I'm really, really happy with it. So drive-by wire and everything works. You can see we just have the pedal right here. This is on its own harness that, because the ECU and this pedal harness are gonna be underneath the dash. And then obviously this, all this stuff, we are going to be looming that probably tomorrow after we play with getting this thing running a little bit, a little bit better. So this was kind of a, a weird little thing. I'm not sure if it just has too much fuel pressure because this these things are rated about 58 pounds, whereas this thing probably needs about th you know 42 or so. So I don't know if it's just getting too much, but you would assume it would still run if it was still rich. It was shooting a lot of black smoke out of the exhaust, so super, super rich, but yeah. I don't know, we did end up putting it up to the Supra with the, these nice jumper cables and had the Supra running had this the fuel pump running with off the jumper box you know this thing has a battery in it still so i don't know uh not 100 percent sure what is up with it uh initially there was an oil pressure protection and this doesn't have like an oil pressure sensor in it so it, it basically was showing zero so i disabled that re-uploaded the file and right now it's just cranking crank and die crank and die but we are so freaking close to this thing uh we ended up uh, i made a huge mistake ordering the collins adapter kit and what happened was, is I got a really nice ACT pressure plate and then pressure plate and then the clutch disc, but it was actually for their different kit. So their kit, like that is in my Supra, is the one where you cut off the bell housing and it's like that aluminum adapter. And anyhow, I was supposed to order that kit. I was talking to Brett, the guy who owns Collins himself. And I was like, hey, what, you know, what kit should I order? He's like, oh, order this one, order this flywheel and order the other thing. Cause this thing will hold like 800 foot pounds of torque or something like that. And anyhow, I actually ordered the plate kit, which is just the adapter kit where you don't cut off the bell housing. So I ordered that so that it, it actually got sent with a different flywheel than the aluminum like cut off the kit. This is basically the no cut kit. I should have ordered the cut kit. So anyhow, uh, I overnighted another set of clutch discs and stuff because basically we'll use an SR20 clutch disc and then like a 3S GTE or like a Toyota Camry pressure plate essentially. So I don't know, uh, I'll eventually order that kit or figure out something in the future. But overall, we are just trying to get this thing running and driving for the event, which is literally in. So today's Tuesday at nine o'clock at night and we just barely got it running on the ground. We have the engine mounts and everything bolted up to it. See engine mounts right here. We still need to swap the sump, but that should be tomorrow's plan is to swap the sump. Clutch and everything should be here in the morning to be able to adapt it to this flywheel and everything. And we should be able to bolt everything up to it. The transmission, uh, I think I'm gonna have to steal the drive shaft out of the 2JZ Mustang and basically just send it. I mean, that's about it. The, this harness, Sean will clean that up. We'll put the sump on it. We'll bolt it in there. As long as we could get it to start and run, maybe have a chance to get this thing on the dyno a little bit, throw a serpentine belt, whack the radiator in it, make some exhaust. A lot of stuff. Tomorrow is Wednesday and we need to have this thing running and driving basically Thursday night to be able to throw it in the trailer and probably like take it to grid life or something like, and like unload it there. So lots of crazy stuff. Uh, we are gonna doing a huge push. So this thing is running. 
so stoked on how this wiring harness and everything turned out. Uh, huge shout out to Phoenix Engine Management. He has a YouTube channel as well. And uh, he does a lot of wiring and ECU pinout. And I actually messaged him because he was on the ECU Master Forum. And he actually sent me a pinout for the ECU Master to this thing. There was already a base map available, but he sent me his base map for that. So shout out to him. And then I was also kind of confused on some of the wiring and stuff. Uh, so I talked to Calvin. If you look up any like 3UZ wiring stuff, Calvin from the car, I think the channel is Cartoons. I don't know how it is. It's, I don't know if it's like Cartoons Network or something like that. But uh, anyhow, he does a lot of 1UZ and 2UZ and 3UZ wiring into utes and stuff in New Zealand. And so he actually sent me a diagram as well uh, that helped out a lot. So yeah, this is pretty much all the wires that start it. Basically we have two ignitions and some other stuff. And then we have the ground right here and then the starter. And that's pretty much how we have it all wired. So this thing is gonna, gonna be really nice and uh, it's gonna look like a professional harness tomorrow as soon as we get all the loom on it. Uh, I need to figure out this whole fuel pressure situation, get all that figured out, but overall, I'm just really, really, really stoked to get my S14 back up and running again. As you guys know, I've had this car probably the longest out of almost them all other than my Datsun. And this is kind of this car that essentially started my channel and like the driving thing. I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of you guys that have watched the videos from way back in my dad's garage, literally like eight years ago, like me LS swapping this thing and, you know, drifting it all over the country. Um, you know, Adam, Taylor, Ray, uh, Aaron from Lone Star Drift, you know, all those guys, all those people I've met is pretty much because of this car and the things that I've done with it. So I, uh, stoked to have it back out. Stoked to be driving at Gridlife Alpine Horizon Festival here in a couple days uh, with Adam and TJ Hunt and a bunch of other guys. So sorry for the long rambles. Um, we do sell ECU Master on motionalperformance.com. So if you guys are interested in ECU Master, I'll talk about that in, uh, in the future. Overall, I need to get home, edit this video and hopefully get this thing running in the car tomorrow, possibly with a drive shaft and everything hooked up. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, see you later.